Welcome to Code with Kurt, the channel that brings you the latest Google Sheets and Google Apps Script videos. In today's video, I'm going to do a location picker. And what I'm doing this on is a web app, and I'm using a Google Sheet to provide the addresses to uh, put the location on the map. So here I got my Google Sheet with the places. I got my web app up with a drop down of those locations, and when I select it, it's going to show me where that is on this map. And this map is, you can zoom in and out of, and I can go to Lambeau Field, which is in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And then I can also go to uh, Stamford Bridge, which is in London, England as well. So just some different variations. A couple things that help me with these maps here. This is, this is coming from a JavaScript library called Leaflet. And... Uh, it is an open source JavaScript library, and, I, and it gives you the commands and uh, the different way to attach your library, and I could go through that in this video. And also with that, I used another documentation site that helped me put this together, and this one's called uh, joshuafraser.info slash leafletbasic slash. And I really use this because this really showed you how to do it without having an API key of any sort, which this really helped. So I use this as well to put this web app together. So I'll go through how I put it together in this video. And I'll give you a step-by-step -step process of how I did that. So let's get started. So here I have a Google Sheet. It's new with some data in it, but I called it Web App Maps here. And I got a location, or I got a sheet called locations down here. And in here, I got just data here, just a table of data where I have place, address, city, state, and zip. And this is where I put my places I want to look up and the address of those right here. So this is no formulas in here, it's just data. And I, with, with a header, header row here. So from there, I'm going to go to tools, I'm going to go to script editor. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy in my Google Apps script here. So here I copied in my Google Apps script code. And next I'm going to create my HTML code. So I'm going to go to File, go to New, I'm going to go to HTML File. I'm going to call this Git Maps. And this is important why I called it Git Maps because it follows this function here, Git Maps. So I'm making it the same thing as this above here. So I'm going to hit OK. So I have that created, and this is just a basic shell of an HTML. So I'm going to go back over here to my Google Apps script. Uh, this first function here is a standard function with Google Apps script. It's called a do-get. This is what starts your web app up. So it'll, once you register your, once you deploy it for the first time, this is what makes it this deploy happen up here. So you have to have this function in. And what this function does is it grabs this file and opens it up so you can see the view of it. So this is this is a very basic command here and this is how it gets the web app started. Next time I go ahead and build my git maps HTML and then I'll go back and forth between this file and the in the code GS file and show you how those interact with each other. So I'm going to go ahead and copy my HTML over here. So I'm going to hit save here. Um, this code I will post in the comments section of the video. So you can have this word by word. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down all the way to the bottom to the body of this HTML. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm doing the pick list here, and I'm doing my drop down with my select statement here. This is your HTML code here. So I'm doing a select here, and how I'm populating these is down here I'm calling a script, and it's the last command on here. I'm calling it load addresses here, and this is a JavaScript callout called load addresses, and that's up here. That starts my one of my first functions in my JavaScript. And here's my JavaScript is in this script tag all the way down to this script. And I got, I believe, two functions here on select and load addresses. 
and I'll cover these here. This is like this is the attachment of the leaflet library. These two files are important here to get the maps to work. It provides all the code that you need for that display of the map. And from within this is your calling commands to call that map open. But I'm going to go with the load addresses here to, to get our drop down started here. And I do have another video from the tag above about creating a drop down for web apps as well. You can check that out. But this is load addresses. What I'm doing here is I'm calling a Google App Script command here that calls a function, a Google App Script function here, get list. Now get list is over here. And what this does is send the SS object to active sheets. I'm declaring my locations table, which is here, locations down here, my sheet name. And then I am getting the last row of that sheet. So I want to know how many records I got, and then I'm going to go through, oh, I got the last row, and then I am returning back an array, and this is get values here. I'm using this command, and this is the start, the first row, this is my starting spot, the row and column, so I'm doing row two, column one, which is right here. I don't want to bring in my header record, I just want to bring in the data below that. And this is declaring how many rows I want. And this is declaring how many columns I want. So I get the last row. I'm going to do minus one because I don't want to do the header record. And then the five columns. And then I'm returning this back to my JavaScript command. And that's going to come through here on the AR. And then from there, I am assigning my ID. I'm getting the object for my ID addresses, which is down here. Right here is the ID of my select. So I'm grabbing the object of this because I'm gonna I'm gonna put in options within that select statement. So I got this. I got this console log. This is just for debugging. This just displays it where you can see it. You don't need this command. You can cross it out. But I can show you where that's helpful. And then the first option I'm creating is a blank option just to start out with. So I'm doing the value in text blank and I'm, I'm appending it to my select statement here. So that's my first option I have. Next I'm going to be going through my array and my array consists of these four records right here. And what I'm doing here from that array is I'm grabbing there's an item and an index that comes back. And with this I don't really need the index I just want the item back and then each spot so each one of these rows is a its array itself so this would be the zero position this would be one two three four like that so then that comes out with item zero item one item two item three item four and that's my location street address city state and zip and how am i assigning the value to this select is i'm doing the concatenating all the street address city state and zip all together here to pass this my value and my text is my location. So that's what we see as location, but when I'm selecting it, I got this value with my selection for my option. And then from each one of these that I'm going through, I'm appending it to my select statement, address select. So that completes my drop down list for my web app. And then the next thing that I'm putting together is when I select one. So I got my drop down list. The next thing I do is I select a location. So from there I got this on change. So I'm changing that drop down and what happens then is I get this on select function that I'm calling. So that starts here is my on select function. And what I'm doing there is I am what I'm doing there is I'm grabbing the value of my selected address which will be the street address zip state and zip the street set the street address city state and zip and then from there I'm passing that well the next call is in another Google Apps script call I'm going to make which is calling this function get address 
which is back over here, which is my function right here, get address, and I'm passing that address through here, which is the, again, the street address, city, state, and zip. I'm passing that over here to this function. And then from there, I'm doing this geo code, and basically what I'm doing is I'm getting the latitude and longitude of that address. And that documentation could be found here, Google Apps Script, under this geo code. And basically you pass an address in. It comes back with a response that you have to parse through. And the two things that I'm parsing through, you get this results back, this response results back. And we're looking at the results of I, which I think you're getting one result back. And then from there, I'm grabbing the result. Well, right here. From there, I'm grabbing the result, geometry, location, latitude, and result, geometry, location, longitude. I need those two numbers. So I'm doing that call here. I got my return array because I want to return those longitude and lat latitude numbers back. So here I copied that over here. Again, I got this logger statement here, which that just displays for debugging reasons. So I'm coming through here, and I'm pushing that to this array, and then I'm returning that array right here. So I'm grabbing the first one I find, a first result, which I think you only get one result for this. You're getting your latitude and longitude for the address you're putting in, and I'm passing those two values back over here because I need those two values to start up my maps. So here I got this here, the console log, which again is for debugging. This is really not needed for this functionality. And I'm doing a for each, so I'm going through the results I came back, which should just be one. So from here, I'm defining my div here and I'm inserting it at location map. So location map is right here. This ID, I'm inserting another div inside this div here. So I'm inserting div ID map, which that's, we're gonna be working with that a lot. And then I'm styling it with the 600, 400. That's how big I'm making it. You can make it bigger here, but this is what my starting value is. So from there, I start calling the leaflet commands here. So I got a variable called map, and this is l.map, which is a standard leaflet command here. I want a map. I'm centering this thing on my latitude and longitude numbers that are coming back. So if I come back over here, I think, yeah, latitude is the first number and longitude is the second number. So my item zero is the first, item one's coming back. I'm entering that in the center of my map and I'm giving it a zoom to how zoomed in I want on that initial screen. So I got it set to 15. Again, this is the leaflet command here. Here's another leaflet command is the tile layer. This adds the actual map that is seen when I open it up. This is actually the streets and stuff like that. From here, you're just basically entering a box. This adds the map itself, the streets and stuff like that. Another leaflet command, it's called tile layer, and you're sending these kind of images of maps here. And this right here, this is the bottom. I guess this is the source of it, the open source of who provides that map as well. So I kept the copyright on there as well. That's on the bottom right corner. And then again, you're adding it to this object called map, add to map. And then the last command for the leaflet is the marker, and that's the, the, the picker on the, on the map that shows you the exact location of where you, you enter the latitude and longitude, and that is the marker here. So that, again, is another leaflet command that is used, and that's another add to map. So from here, the gist of it is we get our address, we get the latitude and longitude from a Google Apps script, command here, we pass it back over here, we take those numbers, we put it in here to get our location on a map, we provide the streets here, 
and then we put our marker with the exact same latitude and longitude. That puts the, the dot showing the exact location. And then that is the end of that function. So then we got our location. So that explains all the HTML and the Google Apps script here. So next, let's go ahead and publish our code. So I'm going to go up to publish. I'm going to go deploy web app. And the first one I'm going to say, I'm just going to copy and say new. This is the first time we're doing it. Only myself. I'm going to hit deploy. We're going to do some authorization requirements here. I'm going to select my account. I'm going to select advanced. I'm going to select it down here. Now I'm going to go ahead and allow it. I'm going to hit allow. So here I got my address here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Instead of copy this, I'm just going to hit OK here. This is the first time I go with it. You can copy and paste that into one of your pages. But what I tend to do um, for debugging and stuff like that, and I don't think I showed this on a preview previous video, is I go back up to publish, I go deploy a web app, and I click this li link right here, test web app for your latest code. And this gives you um, like a development URL. So I don't have to keep doing this process over and over again. I just click this. It pops up like that. You notice how it says dev on the side here. But that's how I test it. And when I'm done testing my changes and stuff, then I'll redeploy it again and get a new address. So I'm just going to show you the development side of this as well. So Again, here we got our drop down, and I could select my location. In there, I got my map. So here I can go over to these three dots. I'll show you this. We can go over here, more tools, developer tools, and you can kind of see the information that comes in and out. So here's the array of the locations that are coming in for my drop down. And then down here, you'll see my latitude and longitude coming back as well. And that plots my map here. So you can see the information coming back and forth. And that is seen. That is that is provided by these console logs here. So that's what displays it out on that. Which is really nice for debugging because you can see the information coming back and forth. So that concludes this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it below the video. And if you're new to this channel, subscribe to catch the latest videos. Until next time.